Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Combat Craig, and today we're talking about sheltered work environments versus normal work environments versus protected work environments with a focus on sheltered work environment. Let's start off with what is VA unemployability slash TDIU slash IU in a nutshell so we have a foundation. So basically, we've talked about this a lot, Craig, and I think it's such an important issue for vets, but Basically, unemployability is a way to bridge a rating from whatever you have to 100%. As we both know, VA math is loco. You know, there's no, you know, the closer you get to 100, the harder it is to get there. But if you can show that your, your disability causes you not to be able to work, then boom, they bridge it. You go from 70, which I don't even know what that is. Like, it's like $1,400 a month. And then you can get all the way up to uh, 100%, which is $3,400, $3,500 a month. So that's why it's so important. Yeah, I like the way that you say that because it, it literally is the bridge and that's uh, <laughs> it doesn't get easier the higher up you go. So no. 70 is a good example. It gets a lot harder. And is it just generally speaking, going down another rabbit hole, VA claims are all about strategy. I preach and I teach strategy in my boot camp. Check it out at combatcraig.com. Um, I kind of think about a 90% rating, which is 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, rounded up to 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, rounded down to 90, or 90 on the money. Um, I think about it like every 10% equals a point. Is uh, that sound about right to you? or? Yeah, when you're at 90, it does, because basically say that you're 90% disabled, they say you're 10% able. able. Yep. And so you have to take 10% of that, which as you said, is only 1%. So it gets, you know, you can get a 40% rating if you're at 90, as you said. Depending on which 90 you're at, you need to be at 91 if you want to get into the hundo club. So, yeah, TDIU yeah. is a good way to to uh, gap that. The point is, I guess, um, it yeah. doesn't get easier the higher you go. Cool. Thanks, Matt. So we were talking uh, a couple of days ago about a protected work environment, and I kind of wanted to go into – what a sheltered work environment is, but I left a few um, things out. So kind of three things, normal work environment, protected work environment, sheltered work environment. Yeah, sure. I, so, I mean, I mean, again, got to back you up because you just, you got a lot of knowledge in there, Craig, but you just kind of jumped from A to A to Big 14. brain guy. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, point in your head, look who finally got a new hat. I don't know what happened if he must have run it over with his tractor or something, but now he's got a really perfect one. I, I, I love that. Same hat, dude. Same hat? I thought the hat had holes in it. Nope. No. This is it. That's All it. Right. One hat. This doesn't Fine. go outside. Ah, okay. So, so the three work environments you talked about, normal, protected, and sheltered. If we, if we back up a second, unemployability is just like 100%. You think 100% is the max you get? Well, no. But if you once you get 100%, you might be able to get above that on uh, special monthly compensation. So with the VA, it's never, never obvious. So with unemployability, you can actually work. You can work and make less than the poverty line in a normal work environment. No big deal. If you make more than that, well, the VA is going to first say you're working. You can't get unemployability. But you can prove one of two things: that one, it's a it's a sheltered employment, or two that it is a protected environment. We, we got to talk about a protected environment the last time, like Craig said, but a sheltered environment, you know, you, you want to know the definitions. Yeah, a go for it. Might be, might be the only one that has a definition. And that is that is an, uh, kind of an old term of art word, sheltered work environment, where it's like a workshop, where it's a, you know, iron worker or a factory where they're making bottles or something. And you have an employer there let's say he's a vet or vet friendly, and he brings in all these veterans, he doesn't necessarily care how fast they do things or how well they do things, or if they blow up at people or if they show up. He's gonna employ them and give them a place to work. It's a sheltered work environment, meaning he's allowing behaviors, if you will, that would not be allowed in a normal or competitive work environment. If the VA is screwing around with your back pay and your effective dates and you wanna challenge it and you don't know what to do, you might want to check out the sponsor of today's video, Hill and Potten. Check them out at hillandpotten.com. And he's eating it. So everybody yeah. gets paid 70 grand a year, and I'm the sheltered work environment guy, and I fight with everybody, and I'm weird, and I show up, you know, an hour here and maybe two hours there, 
for the entire week. I get paid 40 hours a week, just like everybody else working in there. That's how sheltered it is, right? It, well, it could be that sheltered or it could be you just get paid by the hour and you work when you show up. I mean, okay. in, a, in a competitive work environment, if you just don't show up. Yeah, you're you not going to be there. Go right. People, you're you're going to be you're going to be fired there. So but either way, yeah, but that, that's what that would look like. I don't see those as much anymore, Craig. I, that's a kind of a lost space, um, you know, when do you see a factory? When do you hear about a factory in the United States anymore? I was going to say, if you're a Chinese veteran, you'd probably be in good shape. But I don't think we manufacture anything here anymore. There are no more widgets and there is. Yeah. So that's part of it. This has changed over the last 30 years just by the nature of us, you know, not doing as yeah. much manufacturing. Just as an example, there's plenty out there. But yeah, let's go into the definitions a little bit more. So. A protected work environment does not have a definition, correct? Correct. A normal work environment with regard to TDIU claims, you can't make over the poverty limit. That's a definition or a way to look at it. Is that right? Yeah, that's one. And then a sheltered work environment doesn't have any definition or does have a definition, but it's dated. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that, and I think you hit the nail on the head. The one there that most people have to go for now is protected work environment, and the VA hasn't defined that. And so, you know, they'll deny it for, you'll have one VBA judge deny it for one reason, and then another VBA judge say, no, the definition is this, and deny it for that. And so they kind of use the fact that it's vague against veterans, because if we had a definition, then the veteran, we could say, okay, do you meet this definition, and what do we need to do to prove it? So it's it's been frustrating how they've done that, but that's that's where, if you will, the game is played now. It's protected work environment. Well, I, I'm going to read into this a little bit. It sounds like you're volunteering and uh, challenge accepted. Me, me accepting the challenge on your behalf. It sounds like your law firm should uh, go to the court and argue this and turn it into a precedent-setting thing, so there actually is a definition. But then that'll be Vegas shit too, probably. <laughs> uh, well, challenge accepted. Uh, we, we just got a case taken up to where the court is going to have a panel to decide if the VA's, you know, loosey goosey, I use this definition, you use that, is valid, or if we're going to have an actual definition. So I'm, I'm excited just to get some clarity here, I right? Because it's, it's ridiculous if, uh, you know, one one standard is here and the other standard is just absolutely impossible. So I think. Once we get some clarity there, and I'm hoping, you know, well, La Brusa is the name of the case, and uh, we argue it in two months. And I'm hoping that, you know, it'll take like three months after that. So what is that? That's midsummer or something. We should we should have a definition, and hopefully you and I can get back together and talk about that and, and see how that can help vets. Oh, for sure, that'll that'll help a lot if you do your job right <laughs> for the vet. Oh, but <laughs> if you've reviewed all the medical evidence and you know you're missing something to establish service connection, like a diagnosis or a nexus, you might want to check out my med team. There's a link in the description. They can help you with your missing medical evidence. All right, so sheltered work environment. So the VA has a form for everything. So I'm in a sheltered work environment making widgets and um, – what form do I fill out? How do I let the VA know, hey, I'm, I'm not in a normal work environment. I'm sheltered and I can make as much money as I want. What form do I fill out and let the VA, how do I let the VA know so they don't come mess with me? Well, with, uh, you know, with all three of those, with the sheltered or protected or, you know, under the poverty line, there is no form. And so if you apply for TDIU, that's, 21-8940. So if you if you, that, you would basically attach a, a, what I would do is attach a statement saying, I am working. However, here are my conditions. Here are my limitations. Here's, you know, how I get accommodations from that. If you have already won and they come back at you and say, hey, we're reducing you because we see that you're working. Again, no form. You just need to respond to the VA. Um, the best way to do that is that on a 21-41- 38. 38. Yeah, the statement from the vet. Um, and just again, lay out, okay, I work, but this is what I do. This is how I do it. I work for myself. I work for my family. I work for an employer who doesn't really care if I show up or not. 
And, and, and those are the things you want to lay out. But the, you're right. As form driven as the VA is, this is one we don't have yet, but who knows what will be published next week. So, so the most likely scenario, and I'm sure this is the one you see because you adjudicate claims and I deal with my own. Um, most of the time this would happen, um, you just get a reduction letter. Like that's how you find out. And then you're like, oh, and then you got to know what to do. And, and that's yeah. what I would like. So that's that's basically how most veterans find out that that is right. nice to be able to kind of isn't that kind of showing your hand a little bit. If you send in a statement when you fill out the eighty nine forty in the first place, it's kind of like I can't work, but I'm kind of it seems like it might be better to argue it on the back end is kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I could see that. But if you are working, one of two things could happen. One, uh, the it would show up on your earnings record for Social Security, and they'd look at that and automatically deny you. Or two, right. if you're working under the table, or you know, if you're working under the table, and it doesn't show up, if they find that out afterwards, not only could they say we want to sever your IU, we want to take all that money back. So, oh yeah, that, and they're gonna probably call their little buddies over at the IRS, and yeah, that's all exactly. because <laughs> that's illegal. Obviously, we're yeah. not doing illegal stuff. Play the so, game, I, don't do illegal I would, stuff. I would, yeah, I, I tell them up front. Uh, just to kind of have it all out there because if it is projected, it's protected, you know, and because they're going to, you know, they're also going to ask your last two employers, how long did you work there? When did you work? You know, yada, yada. Let's talk about the uh, second situation. Let's say I'm on TDIU, um, sheltered work environment isn't me. Let's use the pr uh, protected work environment example. Just my statement, you know, I'm a layman and I'm speaking about labor stuff. It seems like it might be a good idea to have like a uh, good bookkeeping to show things, maybe like how money moves around in my business. That might be a good thing. And then would a vocational expert's opinion be helpful in making an argument? Yeah, well, to that last point, I think a vocational expert is, uh, is, is wonderful in any IU case at any point because they actually understand the Department of Labor standards on what competitive work looks like. They can take, you know, your disabilities and overlay them on what kind of work you were doing and showing, you know, okay, you can't do that past job and the current job you have, you give yourself so much leeway, no one would hire you. And so, yeah, th those are great. Um, the so how they do it, they do a proposed reduction. And I, I believe you either get 30 or 60 days to respond. You, you get 60 days, you need to appeal it within 30, which will buy yeah. you a a month or two, which will turn it into 120. But still, yeah. you need to move quick, whatever. If you're going right. the vocational expert route, which it sounds like you should, um, get it on, get get moving on it. Yeah, I, I see, I, I struggle with that, whether I would, I mean, you know, you want to spend the money, it's probably about $1,000. You could spend it up front like that. Uh, or you could write out a statement saying, here's what I do. Here's why I couldn't do my last job. Um, you know, here's what my doctors say. If you look at the C and P exams, a lot of times, if you have multiple disabilities, you know, the back doctor will say, "Oh, I agree with him. He can't sit for more than 10 minutes or stand for more than 15 minutes." You know, and you say, "Hey, look, I couldn't do this and couldn't do my last job." Um, but if you write a statement about how you, the owner, you know, your own boss, if you will, gives yourself these breaks, or even your brother, or you know, an, an, another employer, this is what they do. If you have a if you have somebody else for whom you're working, I would definitely want to say that from them saying, yeah, he works for me. He's a great guy. I love him. But here's the leniencies I give him. That's that's strong. VA has a hard time coming back and So you can do those. That's what I would do on a proposal. Or you can do those plus the big guns with the with the VE. I definitely would use a VE up front. That, that's what we do. This is the way I think about it. And whatever, uh -huh. whenever they come to reduce my rating, this is like my mindset won't change because I'm real clear about where I'm at with this. So if I'm at 3,400 bucks a month, I get a reduction notice and I know that I have 60 days and I turn that into 120 days. That means I have 120 days of 3456 or whatever it is right now, plus your dependents and all that. And it's going back down to 1200. That seems like a no-brainer to do the explain it in a letter, but go spend a ground in a vocational expert. Yeah. If that increases my chances of of it not going away, and then I have to lawyer up, I, I think I would just or I would definitely just spend the money. But 
not everybody's in that boat. I, I usually I usually don't think you do math very well, but that's really good math. I totally agree with it. So vocational expert to win, and then vocational expert to explain the protected work environment. I mean, you could do that too, right? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. I, at least from what I understood, you're you're saying on the front end, just be like, talk to them and say, hey, what do you think about this? Yep. You know, give me a $200 consult and say, is this protected or not? And if they say, well, I'd be worried about that, then yeah, you need to think about that. That's for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to do it. I wonder uh, how much they argue these things. You, you know, once you get into the weeds here, TDIU is one thing, arguing, but they but it doesn't matter. A doctor at a CNP examiner is not qualified to talk about protected work environments. A, there's no definition, <laughs> right? Shelter work environments right. got shipped offshore in the 80s. Um, so it's not a doctor. The vocational expert is what I'm going after. But yeah, right. it would probably be a good idea to have, you know, your QuickBooks running pretty good. So you could, you know, would you attach any of that stuff if it could show, hey, actually, yeah, yeah I'm just the pretty face. The, here's my employees. Or is that getting too deep into the weeds? I think, I think, I think that's, that's viable, but I think a better one is just like a log of your hours, you know, like if you're crazy like you and making videos at 3 a.m. and then sleeping in till 11 because you couldn't sleep the night before, what employers go, who's going to put up with that? You know, like, hey, I got to talk to, I got to talk to Craig at 10 a.m. to figure out what video is and what we need to change up. Where is he? You know, so I think putting a log in of what you're doing when you're doing it, that's really effective as well. But if you have employees, again, getting their statements on, yeah, we see him. Who um, has firsthand knowledge? They're qualified to make a statement if they're yeah. qualified. And um, the log thing, I love it. And the, the log thing, I, it really became important to me with, uh, you know, logging your migraines. But really, logging pain, logging all sorts of things, this is no exception. So, yeah, you don't need QuickBooks. Log your hours. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't remember to log stuff, whatever. Put a camera on you, <laughs> and when you move out of bed, you know, like, you figure out a way to do it. That's it. Or put the effort into it. You're on TDIU. They're going to be asking about that log, so take that extra few minutes and, and keep one. Yeah. I, li I like that. That's a, that's a good way to argue that. All right, cool. So um, we kind of did a little sheltered, normal, and protected you have a protected work environment um, case that you're working on. We'll come back and and uh, get an update, hopefully, sometime yeah. soon. You're pretty optimistic. They're actually going to do something in three months. So uh, should I put you down for 2027 or? Uh, yeah, 2024. Okay. All right, cool. It's, uh, I'm seeing the dates are missing. So not this summer, next summer. No. Anyway, just giving you a hard time. Cool. Thanks for uh, – Hopping on, I think that uh, clarifies it. It definitely does for me. I, I didn't understand the difference be between sheltered and protected and makes a lot of sense. Sheltered just really basically doesn't really exist anymore. I, I said, ironically, the one with the definition right. no longer applies. <laughs> and that was, that was my point. Of course, they're yeah. going to manipulate the situation into the one that has no definition to make it harder on us. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. We're the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we love you, and thank you for your service and all that. But we're going to just right. undefine things. All right, cool, man. I'll see you in the next video. Look forward to it, man. There are two times when you don't need a nexus. When you file a claim while you're still on active duty, like a BDD claim, or when you're in the one-year presumptive period. Any other time, you need a nexus. You also need a strategy. Check out my boot camp and contact my med team if you need a nexus.